All right. Good morning, everybody. Let's get things kicked off. Uh, my name is Rob Triplett. I'm with the Pendle Jer Jersey chapter of NECA. I just want to thank everybody for dialing in this morning. Um, this presentation will be recorded, uh, so I request that everybody keep their computer on mute unless you have a question, and please hold all your questions for the end. Um, we're happy to have Buckingham Group on today. I have Chris Delavera and Tim Batty. Um, Buckingham is a new premier partner with NECA National, so we're really happy to have them in front of you all, in front of our, all of our members. Um, so if you do have any questions for them, please use the chat function or just save your questions for the end. Um, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Tim Batty and we'll get things kicked off. Thank you. Thanks for the introduction, Rob. Uh, I appreciate Rob for helping set this up and give us an opportunity to give a little background about Buckingham Manufacturing and then some of the solutions that we've developed for NECA contractors moving forward. And I'd like to thank everyone from the Pendel Jersey chapter that uh, called in and giving us your time and attention during this next 30, 45 minutes. As Rob said, my name is Tim Batty. I'm general manager of Buckingham Manufacturing and I'll kick the presentation off by giving a short background and history and evolution of our company. And then I'll turn it over to my colleague, Chris Delavera who is our VP of sales, and he will get into more of the details on some of the solutions that we've made uh, and hopefully continue to make. So I will share my screen and start the presentation off. Wonderful. As I said, this presentation is how Buckingham has helped and hopefully to continue to help NECA electrical contractors moving forward. So a little history about Buckingham. We are actually in our 126th year. Uh, Buckingham was founded in 1896 in Binghamton, New York. The, interestingly enough, uh, Buckingham started as a blacksmith shop making climbers for utility poles. Ezra Cornell from Cornell University was the world's United States first line worker. And he literally, quite literally invented utility poles to string wire up uh, at that time was telegraph. And Cornell University is located in Ithaca, New York, which is about an hour away from Binghamton. And that's why uh, Buckingham was founded. And its, its history is in the roots of its history is in Binghamton, New York, because of Ezra Cornell. We've continued on that heritage by primarily and nearly exclusively focusing, focusing on the utility companies whether that's electric, inside and outside, telephone, cable, arborist, and the tower industries. That's all we, that we focus on. And our niche in the industry is partnering. I know that's a cliche a lot nowadays, but partnering with companies and working directly with our customers and end users on customizing our products for their uh, problems. We've become the go-to company in the industry on solving the hard problems, say you have an instance where you need to protect someone from falling off a ladder and there's not a solution that's currently out in the market, that's where we come in because we have the ability to customize our products and our research and development to continue to develop these products moving forward. And we are highly service oriented. As, uh, as I said, our History is to work directly with companies and partner with them. And we're not looking for the, the quick sale as Chris will go into. Everyone at Buckingham wants a long-term relationship and a lot of our long-term customers truly understand that. So our manufacturing facilities are all in Binghamton, New York. We, uh, some people like to say it's better be lucky than good. And we opened up a new manufacturing facility in summer of 2018, right before COVID started. And we were lucky because that allowed us to really spread out and keep our employees safe during the pandemic. And we manufacture everything uh, exclusively in Binghamton, New York, because again, that allows us to highly customize our products. So if we had manufacturing facilities uh, offshore or in various locations, it makes it extremely difficult to be able to build small quantities of products that are exclusively tailored for a person's needs. We like to say that we're good at making 
a thousand things once instead of one thing a thousand times. And plus, we enjoy supporting our local community as well as employing United States workers. So our history and our manufacturing support our core values. So our number one core value is building products that meet or exceed our customers' expectations. And honestly, that is what a manufacturer defines quality as. Many people think quality needs to be high cost and typically high cost things are high quality or else no one would spend the money on them, but that's not uh, how a manufacturer defines quality. Simply enough, it's meeting your customer's expectations every single time, whether that's cost, whether that's functionality, lead times, delivery, customer service, we want to meet or exceed our customer's expectations. Whether that's $600 body belt harness combination or a $5 uh, handline hook for your, for your utility belt. And our second core value is we truly need to understand and we instill this in all of our employees that our customers, our, life, our products help our customers go home at the end of the night. Our products literally help save lives, not only make your work more efficient and more effective, but also send people home to their families, which is the important thing at the end of the day. Our third core value is like many companies that our customers are absolutely paramount. Everything else in our organization is second to our customers. If someone calls and we're in a meeting, you leave the meeting and we pick up the phone. And that is instilled through every single person from our president on down to our customer service and our manufacturing employees that our customers are absolutely king and queen. And fourth, is we need to be the most knowledgeable people on our products and the application of our products in the industry. That is how we truly solve our customers' problems is becoming the most knowledgeable in how they actually do the work, how our, how our products are actually used in the field. And that allows us to continue to evolve our products and to make them better and better over time. That continuous improvement is what we strive for. And without the knowledge of the industry standards, of the work practices, we cannot continue to improve. And lastly, our mission statement. Our mission is to manufacture high quality, reliable, and innovative products to make linemen, arborists, and the workers in the many industries that we serve more efficient, more effective, and most importantly, safer. I read, I read that word for word because that is uh, our mission. That's why we come to work every day. And that's why all of our employees come to work every day. We focus on the utilities. We don't focus on bridges, high rises, uh, general construction. That's not our business. We're exclusively on the utilities so we can be the most knowledgeable people in our field and service our customers and meet their, their expectations. So on that, uh, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Chris Delavera, who's going to review a few of the solutions that we've worked and partnered with companies in the past that make people work efficiently, more effectively, and most importantly, safer. So Chris, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Hey, Chris, before you keep going, you're, you're on mute. So there you go. Yep. Yep. All set. Uh, yeah, we got really good at this and then uh, we got away from it. Now we're getting back into it. So, uh, but again, I just wanted to echo uh, Tim's, you know, comments and thanking uh, you for setting this up, Rob, and thanking everybody for, uh, you know, for hopping on. I know Monday mornings are usually pretty busy. So just to kind of talk a little bit about some of the solutions that we've come up with for, uh, you know, some of the contractors and utilities that we work with. Uh, this is one unique uh, product and uh, solution that we've come up with uh, is a true fit harness. And so basically what that is, is that is, that is truly uh, the first universal fit harness 
uh, in the industry. Uh, there's, there's many uh, harnesses out there that claim to be universal fit. The thing is they don't have full adjustment. Uh, what we've done is we've, we've developed a harness that has adjustments in the front and back that allows the whole upper section to be adjusted up and down depending on the user's uh, body size. So how this can really help the contractors is, you know, you have harnesses that are size small, medium, large, extra large, double and triple extra large. And th that's a lot for uh, a distributor or a contractor to, to kind of keep all these sizes on the shelf. And oftentimes what happens is you might hire somebody that's an extra large, but all you have is a three X on the heart on the shelf. And uh, inevitably the, the worker ends up getting a harness that might be too big or too small. So the ability to have a universal size harness is nice because you're, you know that uh, you know between sizes small and 3X, that's gonna fit probably about 95% of the workforce. So there's a better chance that you're gonna have a harness that will uh, you know, fit the individual that, that is being issued that piece of equipment. They're available in both the X and H style. Uh, there's one here that's shown, it's got dielectric hardware. So that's nice if you're working around energized conductor or uh, you know, any, any kind of energized uh, lines. Okay. Kind of sticking with that same theme of, you know, just again, modularity and adjustability. Uh, there was a, a belt that we've recently developed. Again, this is an adjustable belt that will fit anybody from a waist size 30 to a waist size 40. And again, I kind of echo what I talked about on the harness is that you know, if you have somebody that's got a uh, 32 inch waist and, and you don't have a belt that fits him, uh, it, you know, sitting on the shelf, you might end up, uh, you know, forcing that individual to wear a belt that might not fit him uh, optimally. So to have the ability to adjust the belt up and down uh, is, is a really nice feature. The other thing you can kind of see these buckles, they look like wings that are right above the D-rings. And uh, that is designed to be incorporated into a full body harness. So uh, this could be used as a ladder belt. It could be used uh, in conjunction with a full body harness if somebody was working on uh, steel, such as a, a transmission tower or a substation. So again, it's, it's the ability to have equipment that will do, uh, you know, serves as multifunctional. We've really, over the last couple of years, uh, you know, stepped our game up on what we call PFLs and retractable life, uh, retractable lanyards. Uh, PFL stands for personal fall limiter, and they can be used typically where an energy absorbing lanyard would, would normally be used. But the, the, the key thing about the PFLs and retractables is that it's going to greatly reduce the fall distance. So if you're working in an industrial setting, you might be working in a, uh, you know, a cherry picker or uh, you know, electric lift, and you might be anchored off to you know, something above your head where it's only 13 to 15 feet off the ground. With an energy absorbing lanyard, if that individual were to fall, he's a six foot individual, with six foot lanyard, um, what could end up happening is you might end up hitting the ground before his lanyard is done deploying. So these retractables usually catch within about six to, six to 18 inches and they lock up. They reduce the uh, force of the fall and, um, you know, and it greatly reduces the distance of fall. So, and, and again, these are, uh, they can be worn on your back. They can be attached to an anchor point. So there's many different configurations. This one on the right-hand side that has the black webbing with the uh, square snap at the bottom, that one's designed to actually be wrapped around and it's a tie back. So it can be hooked up to, uh, to steel can be hooked up to a girder or any other suitable anchor point. And that's, that's key because it reduces the need or eliminates the need for a, uh, an anchor point, an anchor sling, so to speak. This is an interesting uh, concept. I was contacted, uh, was uh, a NECA contractor reached out to me and uh, said that he was, he had the, uh, he was contracted to do all the, electric work at an Amazon uh, distribution center that's opening here in Binghamton. And he had to set about 200 of these steel poles. 
And uh, this was a smaller contractor and he didn't have a bucket truck. So he had to set these poles with a telehandler, telehandler that happened to be on site. And the challenge that he was having was that he was using a sling that was choked onto the, uh, onto the steel pole. And he was struggling because once you lift up a, a 200 pound pole, the sling will actually choke itself onto the pole and uh, you can't slide it down. Uh, so then he would have to carefully catch the, the sling with the fork and kind of slide it down the pole. Uh, the other thing too, is he had, uh, you know, he had help. Uh, they were more or less inexperienced helpers. And no matter where they were putting the sling, the pick point was wrong. It wasn't properly balanced. So he asked us to develop an adjustable sling that could be wrapped around the pole in a basket configuration. So once they had the pole set and he uh, lowered the forks that the sling would actually come down. So this was, uh, you know, it, it was really nice because it was right here in Binghamton and, you know, we stitched some stuff up, like Tim had said, you know, we're very nimble and we stitch some stuff up. I ran up, met him, that, that's one doesn't work, ran back to the shop, stitch some more stuff up. And we came up with a pretty, uh, pretty unique product. So um, even though the pictures are a little bit small, there's a, uh, there's a big, sn large snap hook that uh, attaches into the handhold of the, of the pole. And then the length of the strap is adjustable. And what was nice about this is once that adjustment was made, every one of these poles was the same size, make and configuration. And once they had that adjust that, that adjusted properly, and set the pick point was the same on, on every single pole. So again, it, it, uh, this contractor didn't, or I don't know if he didn't have a bucket truck or his bucket truck was up on another job up in Syracuse. So um, the benefits of this are, you know, he can do it with a telehandler or Bobcat front end loader back, back or whatever piece of equipment uh, they have on the job. And it doesn't require a bucket truck that may be on another job, you know, earning money, um, you know, to, to, to be on this job. Um, again, adjustable for the different length poles. And, um, you know, once the pick point is set, it's, it's nice. So, um, and the key thing was on, the, on that photo on the right, that once the pole was set in place and he lowered the forks, that sling just slid down the pole. So what he told me was he was saving about 20 to 25 minutes on every pole, which at first didn't sound like a lot to me, but when he was up there, and he was setting, again, he said about 200 of these things. Uh, it was a huge time saver. So just a perfect example of, uh, you know, what Buckingham can do to solve unique problems. I didn't even know this problem existed until I met this individual at the NECA conference. And uh, it was just nice to have him, you know, local to, to be able to work back and forth. That's kind of, kind of, you know, build upon what Tim said, you know, that, we want, we want to be your partner. We like partnerships. Sounds a little cliche, but this was a perfect example of a, of a, a partnership, you know, feedback, solution, feedback, solution until we got to the right, uh, to the right uh, product. Ladder fall protection is a, uh, is, is a growing concern uh, amongst uh, contractors, utilities, whether it be in a substation, or an industrial type setting. So what we have uh, worked with here was, um, we know people can belt off to ladders, but if there were a fall, a fall were to occur, the individual would end up riding the ladder to the ground, which, uh, you know, so he's gonna fall in and he's typically gonna get, uh, you know, hit with a ladder that uh, is falling behind him. So one of the unique things that we developed was we, we had to, we had two criteria, we had to keep the, the ladder secured to the anchor point, and we wanted to keep the worker secured to the ladder so uh, he wouldn't hit the ground, he or she. So uh, what we ended up with was a very unique product. This is, uh, this is kind of my baby here. I just happen to really love this product and, and believe in it wholeheartedly. So this is a, a device that has, uh, in the second picture uh, from the left, couple of straps that, that secured to the, the rail uh, on the ladder. They crisscross whatever you're being attached to. Uh, and this, this is a support beam. 
and then they attach back up around the fourth rung of the ladder. You pull them tight. So really what this does is this secures the ladder to the uh, very nicely to whatever is being uh, you know, worked. The second part of the system is a lifeline that attaches again with a yoke system. Uh, there's two pieces of straps that come together and it's attached with a carabiner in the center of it. And you can see in the third picture from the left, our, our worker here is attached to the lifeline. And uh, now he's able to freely ascend and descend that ladder. If he were to fall off the side of that ladder or even come down straight, he's not gonna come, he's not gonna come to the ground. If he falls off to the left or right side, he, you know, his feet may come off, he may be dangling, but the ladder and him are not gonna come to the ground. And then once you get up to your work location, you can see he's belted off, he's fall protected, and he's in a positioning lanyard, positioning belt uh, that allows him use of uh, both hands to, to, to do his work. The other unique thing about this is uh, we've actually used this in a uh, non-energized substation. These straps can actually be uh, lifted up with a hot stick uh, that has a disconnect head, can be lifted up over steel that you have to work on, and then pulled back down. So you can actually lift this up over a, um, a vertical, you know, you, you can wrap it around a vertical support or a horizontal support and get the same protection. So that's the very unique thing about this is that you, you're able to, uh, you know, fall protect yourself in a substation uh, or any type of industrial warehouse uh, setting. This was another uh, product that we uh, worked hand in hand with, with one of the largest electric utilities in the, in the country, where they were having some issues with uh, their workers falling off ladders while they were working to do uh, reconnects or new construction or uh, you know upgrade uh, where the line comes from the pole to the house. So uh, we had done a bunch of testing on this. So basically, what we have is it's ladder fall protection. But if you think about the work that's being done here, there's no place to really attach the ladder to because it's laying up, you know, flat against the side of the house. So what we developed with them, and, and this was there was a lot of extensive testing that uh, that went into this, was a line that goes up over the up and over the house and it gets attached to a suitable anchor point. So you might ask what a suitable anchor point is. Um, we determined a suitable anchor point was uh, it could be a, a, a truck once it was locked out and tagged out. Uh, it could be a tree up to six inches in diameter. Uh, it could be a, a, a deck post that was, uh, you know, sunk in the ground with concrete. So we did a bunch of testing on all this, uh, these uh, different anchor points and, and said, yeah, we can, uh, you know, you can attach to any one of these things. So what ends up happening is you have a, a, an anchor line that's tied off to a suitable anchor point on the other side. The ladder would just get laid against the side of the house and then the worker would attach to that line and ascend the ladder. So the difference here is that the ladder is really not connected to you know, the side of the house and the worker is not connected to the ladder. He's, he's basically climbing. And then once he gets up to where he go, where he needs to do his work, then he can, he can tie off and. Uh, Get into a work position. So, this uh, gave, this system is basically developed uh, to supply a lifeline and, and uh, use anchor points that may be on the on the job site already uh, to fall protect while doing work off the side of the house or even while working up onto the roof, where you have to get off the ladder, transfer for the ladder up onto the roof. So, uh, they they've been very successful. Uh, we're we're just in the uh, implementation stages and uh you know they uh, they really felt that this uh met a need that they that they were running into these have been around for a little while they're uh, temporary uh, horizontal lifelines uh, so these would be used in different uh different applications uh, whether if you're working around a trench or you had to set this up in a substation to where there was going to be a lot of work done and there was going to be traversing, uh, you know, individuals traversing uh, a certain work area to perform work. And uh, this system's a little bit unique that it, it is designed for two people, but it's basically two slings with a tensioner and uh, 
allows you to uh, to work back and forth as you uh, you have to uh, you know perform your work at an elevated uh, location. Confined space rescue uh, that is starting to really uh, pop up quite a bit now. So uh, this system is really nice because it it's kind of like uh, two systems in one. So it utilizes a barrier, you know, a, a barricade that's uh, already uh, maybe located or on the job to prevent people from going into the manhole. So uh, what's really unique about this system is that it uses a piece of equipment that already exists on the job and it can be used for either uh, a, a tied off tethered system or non-tethered system. So there may be instances where you, it may not be feasible to go down into the uh, confined space with a lifeline, you know, if there's uh, obstacles in there or something that, you know, could end up tangling the lifeline. So uh, the non-tethered system is, is pretty neat because if you look at that harness on the right, all those yellow loops are uh, reflexite. So if that individual uh, for some reason goes down and, and uh, you know, is faced with an injury, and he's incapacitated, and I shine a light down there, those, those uh, loops are gonna light up. They're gonna be very easy to see. And you may ask, oh, you know, what are the loops on the hip for? I wouldn't wanna lift that individual up by his hip. Uh, in this system here, there's two lines. So what would happen is if somebody were down there and they, they, they fell down onto their side and they were kind of maybe might've been on their belly, I can hook one of these lines to the hip and kind of pull that individual closer to the, to the hole that I'm gonna extract them through. And then I would take the second line, hook it to one of the shoulder loops. There's a, there's a loop in the front, there's loops on the shoulders, there's actually a loop on the back. Hook that second line to them and then proceed to uh, winch them out of the hole. So the, the hip loops are really there for just to, to get that victim into position to where I can safely lift him out in a, in a more uh, horizontal manner. So that was, uh, you know, that was, this was, again, this was developed with a, a, a very large uh, utility up in the Northeast. Just another example of, uh, you know, Buckingham listening to the, the customer's needs and kind of working with them. And, and it's the back and forth that uh, really helps, helps us develop these products and, and uh, you know, suit the needs of the contractor of the utility. So we did, we developed a uh, you know for for those of you that may be uh, low low medium voltage contractors uh, you know again uh, you know Rob had mentioned we're the uh, latest premier partner so what we wanted to do is really develop a catalog specifically for again the low and medium voltage catalogs that's available on our website uh, you know to be uh, downloaded or or anything like that so um, just wanted to to point that out. So with that, Rob, I think, uh, you know, we are nearing the end. All right. Thank you, Chris and Tim. Really great stuff. Um, I just want to open it up for any questions. Um, please feel free. You can unmute yourself if you have a question or just use the chat box and I'll read the question. Um, we'll just give it a minute here and um, we'll see. Hey, Rob, this is Jeff. Just really more comment, which is uh, I want to thank Tim and Chris for doing this presentation, uh, you know, and thank them for becoming pre premier partners at NECA. Uh, they've been great to work with. Um, I know we have some members from our 126 local on the phone and, um, you know, they, I, they strike me as people who really, uh, Buckingham really listens to the needs of our contractors and, and are willing to you know, make solutions uh, to make it better. So I just want to, again, thank Chris and thank Tim for uh, joining and their participation with us. Thank you for those kind words, Jeff. Yeah, we really appreciate that. You're right, Jeff. Uh, we've worked with Buckingham for quite a few years. Um, and, you know, we've made adjustments over the years to our programs and they've always kind of jumped in there and, you know, the customer service, you can't say enough. Uh, you know, I, Paul, Mike, I know has moved the, 
up in the ranks there, but he used to be one of our um, area uh, service people. And, you know, he's gone out on jobs and have made repair to buck squeezes and stuff in the past. And, you know, there's not too many companies that'll stand behind a product like that. You can always find something cheaper, I always say, but you're going to lose something in the end on that. I think customer service uh, speaks a lot. So thank you, fellas, for uh, coming on and giving the presentation as well. Appreciate that, Steve. Thank you very much. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate that. All right, guys. Um, thanks again. Uh, we did record this session. So if there's anything you want to revisit, uh, we will have this on our chapter website. And um, following up from this, I'm also sending an email out with a, a course survey. So please uh, take that and give your honest feedback. I will also provide Chris and Tim's contact information. So if you do need to get a hold of them, please reach out to them through there. Um, with that being said, I just want to give a shout out for our February industry hour which will be on February 3rd with Jim Dollard, and it will be on how to work with OSHA. So please consider hopping onto that. And just wanna thank everybody for joining us this morning. And I hope you all have a great day and a great week. Thank you. Stay 